Hello guys, good evening all. Very warm. Welcome to SPS Versity. Uh, today is my class is on solutions and we are going to look at uh, different aspects of solutions like uh, the colligative properties and also we are going to discuss some um, um, particular concepts like uh, the ideal and the non-ideal solutions and also we are going to solve a couple of problems so if you like the videos press the like button and subscribe to our videos keep uh, keep supporting us by putting your precious comments or suggestions in the chat box thank you guys <coughs> so i am today in the previous class what we discussed about the rolls law so what i said in the previous class is about the vapor pressure whenever there is a volatile liquid that is going to vaporize and uh, on the surface of the liquid you have the vapors if you close the lid of the container and that those vapors are going to create some pressure on the liquid that's called as vapor pressure and if you have only one component and the vapor uh, are created by that particular component that is called as vapor pressure of the pure component if you take two substances and if you mix them and form a solution and then if both of them are going to vaporize and the vapors also have two components in them then the vapor pressure of the individual component is called as partial vapor pressure which is the contribution of one particular vapor in the mixture that's what we discussed in the previous class and we gave some equations uh, for this so if you have a mixture of two liquids so you take liquids one and two and both of them are volatile so you have to remember this for a solution of volatile liquids we have taken two li liquids which are volatile and both of them are going to vaporize when they vaporize the vapors will contain both of them the liquid the vapors of first liquid and the vapors of the second liquid and both of them are going to exert a pressure on this solution and the total pressure created by both of them is the sum of pressure uh, pressure created by each of them in the mixture that's p1 plus p2 where p1 is the partial pressure of component 1 and p2 is the partial pressure of component 2 and p total is the total pressure created by both of these liquids vapors of both of the liquids and p1 naught is the vapor pressure only when p1 is uh, only you have first component and p2 naught is the vapor pressure of the pure component that is a component 2 and x1 is a mole fraction of the first component x2 is a mole fraction of the second component in the solution that's what we discussed and how does this come say and now uh, this is vapor pressure from this you can clearly see that p2 not p2 is a liquid or the second component is a liquid which has higher vapor pressure that means it's more volatile this is one more conclusion which you can draw so this is more volatile and this uh, is less volatile more is the volatility more easily it gets converted to vapor and more easily it gets converted to the vapor it's uh, um, it's going to cause a more vapor pressure okay so you have mixed mixture 1 and 2 now you have the formula p1 is equal to p1 not x1 and p2 is equal to p2 not x2 if you draw a graph like this where here you have the sum of mole fraction is always unity so x1 plus x2 is equal to 0 and at this place x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 0 and at this place x2 is equal to 1 and x1 is equal to 0 again the sum of mole fraction becomes unity okay let's start with the component that's p1 is equal to p1 not x1 this is in the form of uh, a straight line so this will be the straight line obtained for p1 and this intersects at this point and this is p1 not and the second line that is p2 naught this is p2 and this is called as p1 plus p2 this is p total okay that means the total vapor pressure of the all the components in a mixture is equal to sum of the partial pressures just like uh, according to the dalton's law okay what is y1 and the y2 here these are the mole fractions in the vapor phase like uh, the y1 and y2 are the mole fractions of the vapors here here over here okay then using this we have the equation p total is equal to p1 plus p2 that's p1 not x1 plus p2 not x2 using this we have to solve some problems so 
we'll see this is a in text problem so um, i'm going go, i'm not going so a uh, very deep in a detailed phase so the vapor pressure of the chloroform and dichloromethane they have given at 298 kelvin are 200 millimeter of mercury and 415 millimeter of mercury this is separately like i'll take vapor pressure of chloroform i'll take it as p1 the first component is 200 millimeter of mercury and the vapor pressure of the second component that is p2 naught individual that's 415 millimeter of mercury it is when they are separated calculate the vapor pressure of the solution by mixing here you are taking the mass as a mass of chloroform will be for 25.5 see that and 40 gram of dichloromethane is mixed so mass here is equal to 40 gram you can calculate the molar mass i'll take it as mr for um, chcl3 uh, that's 12 for carbon hydrogen is 1 chlorine is 35.5 times 3 and here the mr value for this is ch2cl i'll write it so that you don't get confused CH2Cl2 there are just one carbon so 12 plus there are two hydrogens 2 times 1 plus there are two chlorines 35.5 times 2 so let me cal quickly calculate this after that we are what we are going to uh, find out is yeah Quickly calculate this values. Uh, for uh, CHCl3, I'm going to get it as 119.3 gram per mole. And for this, we are going to get uh, the 12 plus 2 is 14, 14 plus 71 is 85, right? Yeah, 85 gram per mole. After this, what you are going to find out, what you need actually, calculate the vapor pressure of the solution. You need the vapor pressure of the solution after mixing. That's uh, P total you need. And also, the mole fraction of each component in the vapor phase. That's Y1 and the Y2. This is also what you need. Now, let's calculate that. We have, from using this MR values, that's a molar mass values, we can calculate X1 over here. X1 is mass over molar mass. That's a... Uh, sorry number of moles 25.5 divided by 119.3 over here divided by 25.5 divided by 19.3 plus the number of moles of the second component how do you find out the number of moles of the second component mass by molar mass here you find out the number of moles of the second component that's 40 by 85 divided by total number of moles of all the components that's 25.5 divided by 119.3 and uh, uh, 40 divided by 85 when you do that the total number of moles that's in the denominator is 0.683 that's uh you're going to get 0.312 maybe and here around 0.68 or 69 I'll take it as 0 0.31 and this is 0 0.69 using that what we have what we can find out is p total P total is equal to, this is the answer for the first question, P1 plus P2, that's P1 naught X1 plus P2 naught X2. So what is that you are going to get? P1 naught is 200 times uh, the X1 is 0 0.31 plus the second one, that's 415 millimeter of mercury multiplied by 0.69. Uh, if you do that, you are going to get... 348 millimeter of mercury this is the question uh, first one the second one if you have to find out uh, the mole fraction of each component in the vapor phase you have to go for the next uh, one in the previous slide if you have you, you can see that p1 is equal to y1 p total so mole component in the pure form is equal to it's nothing but Sorry, mole, uh, component, mole fraction in the vapor form is equal to here P1 is equal to Y1 you need. Y1 is equal to P1 divided by P total. What is P1? 200 times 0 0.31 
divided by P total that's uh, 348. Let me calculate that quickly. Uh, 300, 348, 200 times that comes around 0 0.18 and the next one would be y2 is equal to the same way uh, 415 times 0 0.69 overall divided by the p total that's nothing but we found it right now 348 that's going to be uh, otherwise you can deduct it also from 1 in the mole fraction uh, in the vapor phase also the mole fraction that will be unity sum of mole fraction so this is going to be 0 0.82 this is how you find out okay i hope you understood the concept then uh, we are going to go for the next topic that's the ideal and the non-ideal solutions okay how uh, what exactly are ideal and the non-ideal solutions so that's what we are going to see now say whenever the ideal solution whenever you say the ideal solution yeah i'm just looking at my own video in the um youtube so if you are uh, watching put your comments in the chat section live chat section yeah here we go so whenever you say the ideal solution and the non-ideal solution whenever you say ideal gas do you remember the one which obeys uh, ideal gas equation the same way ideal solution is the one which obeys the Rolle's law at all concentrations since we are going to take into consideration of solutions the Rolle's law if it is obeyed under all concentra concentrations then you are going to call it as ideal solution if it doesn't obey Rolle's law then it is called as non-ideal solution okay so the, some of the examples are given you have to remember this in the exam if they give some examples and they ask you to find out which type of solution it is definitely you won't be able to make it unless you have gone through it all of a sudden from nowhere you cannot identify the nor regular if it is benzene tolvin water ethanol you can identify at least but uh, if it is some other example be ready with the proper reading before itself okay and uh, uh, what is the second difference between the ideal and the non-ideal solution so you are mixing two components uh, th that's how you get a binary mixture here so liquid in the liquid and during mixing the, there is no volume change you take 10 ml of solution a 10 ml of solution b before mixing how much volume you have 20 10 plus 10 is equal to 20 you mix them after mixing also you get 20 ml oh you might you might have been wondering oh this uh, will the volume increase will the volume decrease yes it is not that the uh, you mix 10 ml and 10 ml and that means before mixing you have 20 ml and after mixing it almost goes to 30 40 50 ml no the after mixing and before mixing the volume change will be very smaller okay so generally when you say ideal solution mix two solutions before mixing and the after mixing if the volume remains same before mixing 20 after mixing 20 so the change in volume during the mixing is final volume minus initial volume that's 20 minus 20 is equal to 0 so delta v mixing is equal to 0 there is no ch change in volume during mixing and if you take the non-ideal solution there will be a small variation in the volume so you mix 10 and 10, 10 ml initial volume will be 20 and after mixing it may go to 19 it may go to 21 any good values so uh, if you do delta v mixing that's the volume before mixing and volume after mixing and the difference if you see this will not be zero that's called as non-ideal solution and you mix you keep two solutions at the same temperature and you mix them there is no change in heat when you mix them there won't be any change in the heat such kind of solutions are called as ideal solution the reaction is neither endothermic nor exothermic whereas in case of non-ideal solution when you mix the solution there is definitely a vol uh, temperature change either the temperature of the system is going to increase or it is going to decrease okay either it is endothermic or exothermic but delta h mixing is not equal to zero those kind of solutions are called as non-ideal solutions now what exactly um, uh, does this all this difference mean the ex actual thing is in component a you have a a a a type of interaction between the molecules of a you have a a a type of interaction when you have the one more solution which is b in the b you have b b b b type of interactions so these interactions when you mix them 
when you mix them like you are attending a competition the teacher has taken a troop from your college and the other teacher has got a her own troop from her college so you people since you come from the same college you have some bond and those students which who come from other colleges they have some kind of bonding generally what happens when you mix uh, when you are asked to sit together you people sit separately who are from one college and people from the other college they sit uh, uh, separately uh, then in case if you don't sit separately and you just mingle with each other and you sit sim uh, simply you mix everything and you sit then that condition is ideal solution that means aaa interaction bb interaction before mixing is equal to ab interaction after mixing in case of non ideal solution aa inter interaction and bb interaction and after mixing you get ab interaction these are completely different that's why you have the change in volume you have the change in the um, enthalpy hope you understand it now now so in case of ideal solution you don't have any uh, confusion so it follows all the rules we know that the ideal solution doesn't exist okay now it is almost ideal we can't say completely ideal it is almost ideal whenever you say non ideal solutions again you have two differences you two categories one is solution with positive deviation solution with negative deviation from what from Rolle's law okay so what is positive deviation so you take 10 ml of the first solution you take 10 ml of the second solution you mix them delta v mixing is positive you if you mix to a 10 plus 10 that's before mixing it is 20 after mixing you get 21 ml of the solution so what has happened to the volume volume has been increased after mixing there is an increase in volume so delta v mixing is greater than zero why is that greater than zero so that means aa interaction and bb interaction and after uh, mixing them ab interactions are there these ab interactions are not strong as aa and bb interactions it's like your college students are the other college students you are going to come together you don't share good bond you sit separately so the volume increases if you are uh, you if uh, someone wants you to get closer they have to put some energy so the reaction is going to or the mixing is going to take in energy so the reaction is endothermic do you get that the volume increases because they don't share a good interaction because after mixing ab interactions are weaker and volume increases during mixing and also the process uh, of mixing is endothermic and also if you consider the vapor pressures before mixing the interaction was were stronger after mixing the interactions are weaker that means the vapor pressure is increasing so this is what you get the positive type of uh, deviation over here can you see that this one so this uh, dotted lines these are for the ideal solutions and the purple ones are for the non-ideal solution so you expect the dotted lines but what happens is the individual vapor pressures that's p1 and the p2 and also when the p1 and the p2 increases p total also increases because p total is equal to p1 plus p2 so the interactions are not stronger they can vaporize easily when the when they vaporize easily the vapor pressures will vapor pressure will be definitely more okay now the solution with the negative deviation so what happens here you mix 10 ml and 10 ml of the solution what is going to happen instead of getting 20 ml you're going to get 19 ml of the solution so delta v mixing before mixing you have 20 you had 20 ml of the solution after mixing you get 19 ml of the solution so the volume after mixing has been decreased so delta v mixing is equal to negative why is this, this happening because the molecules have come together so there are some very beautiful and handsome boys and the girls in both the teams so you are very bored with the looking at the same people in the class always so you go and mingle with the other college students so you come together and sit together so what happens to the interaction interaction becomes stronger when the interaction bec uh, becomes stronger you need less space so volume decreases and the interaction is happening already without any help of energy so the energy is given out so the reaction is in endotherm sorry exothermic the mixing is exothermic that's going to give some heat and what do you think about the interactions they are stronger so aa bb interaction the individual interactions are weaker compared to the interactions after mixing 
and what happens to vapor pressure after mixing the interactions are stronger if the interactions are stronger the molecules are going to bind together then they can't vaporize easily the vapor pressure is going to come down that's what is shown in the second diagram over here the dotted lines are again for the the dotted lines are again for the ideal solutions and the curves which are below that means the vapor pressure is going to decrease that's for the non-ideal solutions showing negative deviation from the Rolle's law hope you understand that and you have to remember some of the examples like for positive addition what run ethanol and for um, negative deviation what run nitric acid all this um, things you have to remember then we uh, come across a very important concept called as azeotrope what it is we are going to see it now so azeotropes are the substances or it is a liquid mixture which is called as constant boiling mixture what do you mean by constant boiling mixture so you have a liquid mixture a binary mixture which, which is obtained by mixing two components and both of them have different boiling points at some concentration or at some time at some point they boil at the same temperature and you can't separate them them by regular uh, any physical methods where, where you separate two different uh, boiling uh, solutions having two different boiling points so these are called as constant boiling mixture they are going to boil at the same temperature which is a constant temperature and there is no change in the composition okay so there are two types of uh, azeotropes one is a minimum boiling azeotrope, the other one is a maximum boiling azeotrope. If you take ethanol and water, where did we give this example as? If you take ethanol and water, ethanol and water were given um, examples for the positive deviation. That means, what does that mean? It, we'll, we'll talk it, about it. At the particular composition, that's 90%, 95% by volume of the ethanol. When this particular composition is reached, see the boiling points of the individual liquids and the boiling point of the azeotrope. It's lower than the individual boiling point. So that's why these are called as minimum boiling azeotropes. The boiling point of the azeotrope or the mixture at certain composition is lower than the boiling point of both of the components. Okay. So they uh, in ethanol and water, they have their own interaction that can be hydrogen bond when you mix those hydrogen bonds are interrupted and new bonds can be formed obviously new hydrogen bonds but the AA interaction ethanol interactions and water interactions were stronger before mixing after mixing they have become weaker so you need less temperature to boil them so they boil at a lower temperature that's why they are called as minimum boiling azeotrope on the other hand if you take the maximum boiling azeotrope then what's going to happen this is what we are going to see so whenever you say maximum boiling azeotrope consider nitric acid and the water now these both of these components had some their own interaction that's a a b b type of interaction after mixing them they are going to come closer volume decreases and the bond becomes stronger the interaction becomes stronger when the interaction is stronger if you have to boil them you have to supply more amount of heat so the boiling is higher the boiling temperature is higher now that means it is going to show the negative deviation because the interactions are stronger and it is it will be maximum boiling azeotrope so the solutions which show the negative deviation from Rolle's law they form the maximum boiling azeotrope and the solutions uh, which show the positive deviation from Rolle's law they form minimum boiling azeotrope this is all about the azeotropes you can go through different examples which are mentioned in the textbook okay yeah now we are going to go for the next topic that's colligative properties colligative properties are the properties which depend on only the number of solute particles present mm, say yeah you uh, i'm i was thinking about some general random examples you go to a Pani Puri shop and you you go with your couple of friends. See, you, the four friends are there, you are going. And you have a competition over that. Who is going to eat most number of plates of Pani Puris? 
say you don't like pani puri you eat just one plate just to be in the competition you are one of your friend he likes very much but he can't eat too much so he stops at second plate whereas one of your friend the two other two friends they have good appetite and they are going to eat four five six seven plates of pani puris so eating of pani puris depend on what your capacity right so you can eat as many as you want so this is your nature not the number this is your nature depending on your nature you are going to eat uh, whatever the number you want but if you are supposed to be provided with the aadhar card whatever your nature is your appetite may be very good you may be very handsome you may be very ugly you may be very tall very thin whatever you will be given with only one aadhar card right so this depends on number if you four friends are there you may eat 10 plates of pani puri 20 plates of pani puri um, uh, but if you are supposed to be given with aadhar card only four aadhar cards will be given correct so that aadhar card giving of aadhar card depends on the number of people which you are there the same way the colligative properties mean it is those properties which depend on the number of solute particles which are there in the solution and we have majorly four colligative properties relative lowering of vapor pressure elevation of boiling point depression increasing point and also the osmotic pressure we are going to see one after the other okay yeah so let's go guys relative lowering of vapor pressure what is relative lowering of vapor pressure hey some of the students who are watching this video they are asking ma'am we need pani puri see i gave the example just to make you understand because it's the evening time it's the snack time that's why you want to eat pani puri okay the relative low don't write this in the exams relative lowering of vapor pressure so we are going to speak about solute solvent interactions from now on now you take only a pure solvent there will be some kind of interactions and that particular solvent can vaporize and create those vapors are going to create a vapor pressure now you mix a solute to that you are going to mix a solute to a solvent the solvent can be volatile but the solute is non volatile now what happens there will be some solute and solvent kind uh, interactions when these interactions are present the solvent cannot vaporize easily as before so less amount of vapors are created and vapor pressure will be lowered now what is a relative lowering okay let me consider in terms of uh, definite values let p not be the vapor pressure of the pure solvent and the vapor pressure of this solution let it be p so which is more solvent can vaporize more vaporizes easily this doesn't vaporize that easily now what has happened to the vapor pressure vapor pressure decreases that means what is the decrease in the vapor pressure that's p not minus p one p this was the vapor pressure of the solvent this is the vapor pressure of the solution now what is this is called as delta p which is also called as lowering of vapor pressure vp stands for wave vapor pressure not very important person oh that's vip now what is relative this has decreased related to the pure solvent p not minus p divided by p not this is called as relative lowering compared to this this has been reduced the, this amount relative lowering of vapor pressure now this is directly related to what the mole fraction or the number of moles or the number of solute particles present so we can say this is proportional or this is equal to the mole fraction of the solute so how do you write it x2 this is related to x2 that's mole fraction of the solute what is x2 that's w2 divided by m2 that's number of moles of solute divided by number of the moles of solute divided by solvent okay let me clear make it very clear so that all of a sudden ma'am from where did uh, she get this wm and all whenever i say component one that stands for solvent 
which is in the major quantity. Whenever I say two, this uh, stands for solute. Okay. This is I'm speaking about the subscripts. Then, if I say W, this is a mass or the weight. If I say capital M, this is a molar mass. Now, what is X2? N2 divided by N1 plus N2. N2 is number of moles of the solute. N1 is the number of the moles of the solvent. Always since we are going to take the number of moles of solvent, the solvent is in the major quantity. In the denominator, N1 can is much greater than N2, so you can ignore N2. So you are going to get P0 minus P divided by P0 is equal to N2 divided by N1. Number of moles of solute is equal to mass of solute divided by molar, molar mass of solute. Or number of moles of the solvent is equal to num mass of the solvent divided by molar mass of solvent. This is the final expression you are going to get. You can rearrange it any way to get the other thing. Okay. This is how you write the equation W2 M1 divided by W1 M2. So, the vapor pressure of pure benzene. We have some question over here. We can solve this and go ahead. And uh, if the question in the exam is among, they won't ask the simple question just to make sure you have understood the topic. I am going to say this. Among salt water or among sea water, let's go in this detail. Uh, among sea water and the pure water, which is going to have the higher vapor pressure? I want you to answer this. Okay. Guys, my, if you are watching, just put a comment uh, in the live section. Yeah. Now, if you have pure water and the sea water, pure water has more vapor pressure because when you have the sea water, the sea water will have some interaction, kind of interactions between the water and the salt content which is already present in the sea water. Okay. Now, the question is, the vapor pressure of the pure benzene, they have given pure. Immediately put vapor pressure is P, pure is not. At certain temperature is 0 0.850 bar. So, before solving the question, you should know the bar atmosphere conversions and also the uh, gram kg conversions all these should be known to you and a non-volatile non-electrolyte solid weighing 0.5 gram so they have given the mass of the solute solute that is w2 remember solute is always w 0.5 gram is added to 39 grams of benzene mass of the solvent is 39.0 gram the molar mass of benzene they have given 78 gram per mole what are you supposed to find out vapor pressure of the solution after mixing the vapor pressure of the solution becomes 0.845 bar after the mixing these many things to uh, uh, the pure solvent that's benzene the vapor pressure comes down so what is the molar mass of the solid substance m2 is what we have the formula p0 minus p divided by p0 which is equal to W2M1 divided by W1M2. Just apply this. 0 0.850 minus 0.845 divided by 0 0.850, which is equal to W2 is 0 0.5, W1 is 39.0, and then, uh, sorry, the W1. W2 is 0.85, M1 is 78, and W1 is 39 times M2 is what you have to do. 39 ones are 39 twos are so this is 1 1. You are going to take this here, so this comes here. So 0 0.850 divided by yeah, I think so. 0 0.005 if I'm not wrong. Let me calculate the value. Yeah, this comes out as, I'm not getting my calculator, yeah, 0, wait a minute, M2 goes here, so 0 0.005, 
0.85 divided by 0 0.005 170 gram per mole seems correct that's nothing but the molar mass of the solute this is how you find out if any other questions any other um, um, values are being asked then you have to rearrange the equation that's it and sometimes they may give lowering of vapor pressure observed then you have to take that as delta p and substitute okay then we come to the elevation of boiling point this is a continuation of the previous topic take a solvent which is volatile take a liquid which is volatile more vapor pressure is there for that add a solute to that vapor pressure decreases now if you have to heat two solutions one is a pure solvent the other one is the solution which will have the higher boiling point so there is the general concepts I am saying at a particular temperature uh, sorry at a particular pressure I am sp speaking about now if you take a pure solvent since the vapor pressure is more if you boil if you have to boil it that should be equal to the atmospheric pressure then the solution boils now you need a lower temperature because its vapor pressure is already high in case of a solution there will be interaction between the pure solvent and the uh, solute you have added so you need more temperature to boil it that means if you have to boil it the vapor pressure of that particular solution which is less should be equal to the atmospheric pressure so you need more temperature to boil that so always if i write tb naught as the vapor sorry boiling temperature boiling point i'll write bp is not blood pressure boiling point of pure solvent and tb is the boiling point of the solution if i write this way then delta tb is equal to higher which is the higher value now what do you think the higher value is this is in terms of not in terms of vapor pressure this is in terms of boiling point tb minus tb naught because you need more temperature um, to boil uh, tb stands for boiling temperature to boil the solution you need higher temperature so higher value minus lower value now this delta tb is directly proportional to molality of the solutions why do we have to take molality because it is temperature independent term now also if you have to remove the proportional symbol you have to add a constant that's called as kb this is molar elevation constant or ebullioscopy constant or boiling point constant what how do you define molality as number of moles of solute mass of solvent in kg now you rearrange the equation delta tb is equal to kb number of moles of the solute is equal to w2 divided by m2 mass of the solvent is w1 in kg you have to divide by 1000 since it's given small values are given in terms of grams so if you rearrange delta tb is equal to 1000 goes to nominator kb w2 divided by w1 m this is the final expression which we are going to get if you draw a graph with this the solvent will boil it up if you see the boil so um, there is a particular temperature you are going to increase uh, you are going to heat it so the temperature is going to increase and it will boil when its vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure and that boiling point is tb naught which is lower compared to the boiling point of the solution which is tb and this difference is delta t okay and remember whenever the solvent is water you should know the boiling point that's c 373.15 they may not mention it everywhere don't think that it is not given it has to be understood like uh, from kg not from kg kg classes do not teach that from primary itself you have learned that right okay yeah yeah we are going to go ahead with this question the boiling point of the benzene is what is benzene pure solvent so they have given the boiling point tb naught we are in boiling point so don't go for vapor pressure now 353.23 kelvin when 1.80 gram of non-volatile solute what is the weight of the solute added 1.80 in what mass of the solvent that's w1 is equal to 90 gram the boiling point is raised to the boiling point increases to what is the boiling point increases tb 354.11 
Kelvin after adding this boiling point has been increased. Calculate the molar mass of the solute. M2 is what? They have given the value of Kb. That's 2.53 Kelvin kg per mole. Okay. So how do you calculate this? Now, the question, you are going to solve this way. Wait a minute, let me take the calculator. What we are going to find out? M2. 1000 KB W2 divided by delta TB W1. What is delta TB? It is the difference in the boiling point of the solution minus solvent. In case in the exam you get confused, don't write this step. Just duck the larger, smaller value from the larger value. So 354.11 minus 353.23, that's going to give you 0.88. So delta TB is equal to 0.88 Kelvin. Sometimes they'll give you the difference itself. Then you don't convert Kelvin to degree Celsius and all. Don't add or don't subtract. The difference is same in both the scales. So 1000 KB is 2.53 and W2 is 1.80 divided by delta TB is uh, 0 0.88. W1 is 90. If you do that, 91s are 92s are. So it is 2000 into 2.53 divided by 0 0.88. Wait a minute. 1000 KB W2 W1. Oh, this is 1.80. So, the final answer, okay, this will be 0 0.02, so 1000 multiplied by 0 0.02, we can do this regular, like, uh, in the proper way, but I just want, don't want to waste time today, 57.5. What is the unit? Molar mass. So it should be gram per mole. This is how you solve this. Okay. Now the next question. Depression in the freezing point. How do you calculate the depression in the freezing point? What is depression in the freezing point? So you might have seen in at least movies or if you have gone abroad, you might have seen that. Um, in the snow regions, uh, where they are going to add, what do they add to melt the snow? Or I can give you the examples which we see in later life. Um, in olden days when we were kids, um, uh, there weren't this big uh, storage boxes where they keep ice cream. They had a dabba like thing in which uh, and uh, inside which the salt and the um, ice mixture was kept inside which they used to keep the candies. Okay, why is that so? What happens when you are depression in the freezing point? How do you explain this? So you measure the uh, freezing point of the solvent. That's TF naught. And you add a solvent and measure the freezing point of the solute. That's Tf. When you add the solute to the solvent, vapor pressure of the solution is lower. Why is that lower? This, this is lower. We know that the, in case of solution, the vapor pressure is low. So, if you have to freeze, that's going to take a lot more time. So, how do you calculate delta Tf now? The depression in the freezing point, that's delta Tf, is equal to, it is, if you calculate that, it is a reverse of this. So, the larger value will be Tf0 minus Tf. Since you have added the solute, to uh, for those to come together and uh, um, undergo freezing, then it's still lower temperature. So, now, the same way, Delta Tf is directly proportional to molality or delta Tf is equal to Kf. That's the freezing point constant or uh, molar depression constant. Okay, or cryosto cryoscopic constant. So delta Tf is equal to Kf into 1000, you know that 1000, number of moles of the solute divided mass of the solvent. So at the end you get delta Tf is equal to 1000 Kf W2 divided by 
um, m2w1. This is what you are going to get at the end. So depending on this, let's solve some couple of problems. So how do we solve this question? If you are watching, please uh, convey the terms which you are going to use here and then we'll see how it goes. Forty five gram of ethylene glycol. They have given the mass of solute forty five. Ethylene glycol. The solute is ethylene glycol. So you can sorry, weight is W two mass of solute. M two that's C two H six O two. Twelve times two is for twenty four plus six plus thirty two. How much is it? Sixty-two gram per. Yeah, it is mixed with six hundred grams of water. Calculate freezing point depression. Depression is delta T F. Is how much? And what is the freezing point of the solution? What is freezing point of the solution? Which term uh, do you give uh, for uh, freezing point? How do you calculate that? It is TF. Now, what is uh, actually they'll give you the KF values. That's what I was searching for 1.86 Kelvin kg per mole. Now, let's calculate this. What do you do? What do you want? Freezing point depression. Delta TF is equal to 1000 KF W2 divided by M2 W1. That's 1000 KF is. 1.86 w2 is 45 divided by m2 is 62 w1 is 600 if you calculate this what you are going to get is we'll calculate it quickly really quick times 1.86 times 45 divided by 62 divided by 600 that's 2.25 Hope I didn't go wrong anywhere. So after this, what you are going to do now? Let me recheck the calculation once again. Yeah, two point two five. The difference is Kelvin. Now, what do you have to find out? TF. We know that delta Tf is equal to Tf0 minus Tf. Tf0 for water, freezing point for water is 273.15 Kelvin. So if you need Tf, what do you have to do? Tf0 minus delta Tf. So it's Tf0 is 273.15 minus 2.25. That's going to give you 273.25. 273 Kelvin. This is how you find out. Hope you understood this one also. You are really quick to understand. If you are watching, you can comment. Um, you can put your comments in the chat section so that even we can go through. Even I can say I'll be happy that someone is watching the videos and getting help out of it. So let's go ahead with the next one. Osmosis. What is this osmosis? Since you have learned, the, you might have learned this in high school biology. I guess so. Osmosis is a flow of the solvent molecules from the dilute solution towards the concentrated solution through a semipermeable membrane. What is a semipermeable membrane? This allows only the solvent particles to pass through, but not the solute particles. This is called as osmosis. The movement uh, from the dilute towards concentrated what is moving the solvent is moving so what is semipermeable membrane which helps for the movement of the solvent is called a semipermeable membrane in the semipermeable membrane also you have one is natural semipermeable membrane the other one is a synthetic semipermeable membrane what are the natural semipermeable membranes egg membrane cell membrane parchment paper pig's bladder skin 
like uh, the cell allows only certain uh, substances to go in or go out so this is a semi membrane synthetic cupric ferrocyanide can be one or the um, we are going to cellulose acetate that's the other one synthetic semi permeable that's a mixture of both natural and synthetic so now we are going to go for osmotic pressure so what happens during the osmosis see if I draw something over here wait a minute yes so this is a semi permeable membrane I'm writing it as SPM so we are SPS and this is SPM this is a dilute solution this is a concentrated solution the solvent from dilute solution is going towards a concentrated solution now or you can take just the solvent and the solution and the solvent is going to flow towards the solution side now you have to stop this this is osmosis if you apply a pressure this is going to stop what is the pressure you are going to apply to stop osmosis is called as osmotic pressure where you are going to apply the pressure on the concentration uh, on the on the solution side so if you are going to apply a pressure on the concentrated solution side or the solution side the movement of the solvent towards the solution side can be prevented and this is called as osmotic pressure pi if the pressure is more than this the entire uh, scenario will be reversed okay how do you use this as a colligative property to determine the molar mass if you take the osmotic pressure that that's what we call as pi the regular p for pressure is replaced by pi this is directly proportional to the temperature at a given concentration to remove this proportionality symbol sorry to remove this proportionality symbol we are going to add a constant which is gas constant pi is equal to crt c is nothing but the concentration how do you measure the concentration since it's a solution we are going to measure it in terms of molarity number of moles of the solute over the volume of the solution in liters so pi is equal to number of moles of the solute is equal nothing but w2 divided by m2 multiplied by rt divided by v if you rearrange this equation pi is equal to w2 rt divided by m2 v or if you need m2 you can replace or rearrange this so you are going to get i'm writing over here so m2 is equal to w2 rt by pi v this is how you find out the molar mass of the solute we can apply the same thing for some uh, couple of problems we are going to solve one of them see in liters we have said so whatever is given in terms of cm cube or ml that should be converted to the liters liter is nothing but dm cube so how do you convert the volume 200 cm cube so volume given is 200 cm cube you are going to convert it into liters 200 by 1000 that's going to be 0 0.2 liter and 1.26 gram they have given the mass of the protein 1.26 gram of the protein is there and the osmotic pressure of such a solution at 300 Kelvin so they have mentioned the temperature the temperature comes out as 300 Kelvin and they have given the pressure to pressure is equal to 2.57 into 10 to the power minus 3 bar now you have to compare the unit don't forget this the um, unit of volume should be in liters that's right unit of pressure should be in bars that's right unit of temperature should be in kelvin that's right now you apply the equation you need molar mass m2 is equal to w2 rt by pi v w2 is 1.26 r is uh, 0 0.083 times temperature is 300 divided by pi osmotic pressure is a uh, 2.57 into 10 to the power minus 3 into volume of the solution is 0 0.2 let me calculate this if you calculate this it's going to be I'm calculating this guys one point two six times zero point zero eight three times 300 divided by 2.57 is equal to divided by 0 0.2 that's 61 61.039 times 10 to the power 3 gram per mole since this is a protein definitely it should have a high molar mass that's how we calculate 
in case if the calculation goes uh, wrong somewhere because we press the units faster uh, you can always ping me or you can put it in the comment section so that others get you um, benefit out of it okay so this is how you calculate the osmotic pressure so in today's class we went through the Rolle's law we went through ideal and the non-ideal solution positive and the negative deviation we went through the colligative properties relative lowering of vapor pressure depression and freezing point elevation of boiling point and osmotic pressure and couple of problems related to them sorry i didn't include any of uh, uh, the mcqs today because i just wanted to finish all of this colligative properties in one shot so uh, all of them are related that's why in the next class we are going to see whatever the pending topics are from this chapter along with the couple of m stickers okay yeah so have a good day have a good night bye